Hi, and welcome to Tapped into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tapped into Bayonne, Tapped into Jersey City, and Tapped into Hoboken. Before we get to our guests today, I just want to remind all of our viewers and all of our readers, please get vaccinated if you haven't already. Remember to keep wearing your masks. You know, we're loosening up restrictions, but we're also getting closer to the summer months, the warm weather. We're going to be together more, but we need to stop the spread of this virus. We need to get back to as close to normal as we can. And that's a big part of the conversation we're going to have today is getting back to normal in Jersey City schools. We have Gina Verdebello, member of the Jersey City Board of Education with us. Gina, how are you today? Hi, thank you for having us. Thank you, Gina. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. And we've got Amelia Verdebello. Hello. How are you, Amelia? Good. So before we talk about the schools, I, I want to talk about a, a campaign you guys have been waging over the past probably 12 months or so. Yeah. And this has been related to the Girl Scouts. Before we get into that, though, Amelia, tell us about being a Girl Scout. What does it mean to you? What have you learned by being a Girl Scout? Well, I mean, I started when I was like little because I seen I saw them like on a Macy's Day parade. Um, so I kind of wanted to do it. I kind of like the service, the volunteer service mostly. And selling the cookies was kind of was fun like that. And you get to like get get your own cookies. You pay for them. and They're like, whoa, right there. And uh, it's it's fun. You get to talk. To, well, especially you get to talk to some teachers. You move around because and talk to some friends because you want to sell some cookies. So it's like, it's a little easier, okay. especially so in So you learn school. entrepreneurialism a little yeah, bit. You like, learn you here, know, how to run a take business. The, take the cookies. Take and, and then when you sell these cookies, where does that money go? Well, y usually we keep it in our, well, Girl Scouts, we pay a fee to Girl sure. Scouts and then we, we use some of that money for us to pay for our memberships and we can kind of volunteer around. We can donate some money any, any, anywhere we want, so. Okay. And Gina, you're the leader of the troop, Troop 12026. Mm -hmm. How long have you been a leader? Uh, since February 2013. Okay. And what was it about the Girl Scouts that attracted you and was something you wanted to put your daughters into? Well, she was the reason I wanted to do it in the first place. She, I'd never been one before, so I didn't really know the <laughs> how criteria. To do, I didn't even start one. So, um, and I couldn't find really anyone else to do it with. So Girl Scouts provided me with a, a long time Girl Scout and she was great because she knew everything about Girl Scouts was like long, you know, just knew all the songs and um, the books, everything, yeah. right? She was great. And so her name is Christina. And, um, and so we started mid season cookie season. So I had no idea anything about the cookies and, and everybody wanted the cookies. And, and when we started, we had about 17 girls. And it was just like, and everybody begged to be in it. Like, cause I guess there PS3. wasn't that many to be, many troops to begin with right. at the time. So, you know, people don't want to necessarily run the troop, but they don't mind joining the troop. Right, right. <laughs> cause it's a lot of work, you know, yep. especially the, the cookies alone is a lot of work. Right. And for, you know, I did it for many, many years. The girls love doing it. And it's like you said, they learn, you know, about money. They learn about business. They learn about, you know, um, asking people you know if they're shy and you know this is a way of them getting out there and, and talking to the public especially if we do booth sales and things like that and just coming out of their own skin so okay. and there's a lot more to girl scouts than the cookies i think that's right. what most of us <laughs> yeah. think about we think about the thin mints and the coconut cookies and whatever else it might be but what is it that your daughters have gotten out of the Girl Scouts in terms of leadership skills or, or that sort of thing well i mean you know we've done a lot of things i think um like we were saying, with the money that we, we get from the, the sales, we put it towards a big Halloween party for the community. So the girls all, you know, get dressed up and then, you know, we do like crafts with like little kids because a lot of times, you know, it's hard to do trick or treating for little kids. So this was a way of giving back to the community. And with the COVID this past year, we um, decided to do a trunk or treat. And, um, and Commissioner Bill O'Day was a big help on that because we were doing it in Lincoln Park because we're, we're based out at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. So we wanted to be in the area that we, you know, that we are from. Um, so we did that and that was a, very successful. So any, you know, so we were, I was a little worried about when we weren't going to sell cookies because I was like, well, I don't know where we're going to get the money to do, to do this, but we always figure it out and people donate and things like that. So it, it, and like she said, we pay for patches, we pay for memberships. We don't make that much. A lot of the money does go back towards Girl Scouts uh, USA. So um, it's more of a, a chance to just let them, like I said, learn about um, selling and being their own boss type of thing. Okay. And Amelia, I promise we're going to get to the cookies in a second. But tell me more <laughs> about these patches you earn and the leadership skills you earn. Well, I don't know. Mostly I have like two patches here. Just okay. Well, for like speaking and for archery, because I did archery in this camp, for, well, this Girl Scout camp, but it also includes like other girls who aren't Girl Scouts. Okay. But 
Yeah, the patches that you earn, it just it, dep it depends. Either you do it by the book or you earn a fun patch. Fun patch is like you could do, you know, have fun. You, like, let's say facials. Like every girl could do like a facial or something. Uh, that's a fun patch. And uh, a patch by the book would be like an earned patch like these. Like you have to do it by like certain, like you, as a brownie, you have to follow like these keys in order mm -hmm. to obtain a patch. It just depends on which way you go with it. Would you say within the Girl Scouts there's, there's a sisterhood and there's certain mentorship that goes on? Oh, yeah. Is this something that you find is helping you as, as you, I don't want to use the phrase grow up. I mean, you're a young teenager, but, you know, you're, you're growing. Is this helping you? Yeah, I mostly watch over the little girls. Okay. I When I was a brownie, I did have, like, a girl, like, she was Faith. She was way older than I was, but she kind of watched over us as well. So, but, as, yeah, as you grow up, you kind of gain, like, sisterships and mentoring like little you know you just get used to it perfect i mean we're going to come back in a few seconds we're going to talk more about the girl scout cookies and why you guys are really here today thank you so much for being with us burns brothers memorials monuments and markers 787 tunley avenue jersey city hudson county's only monument maker serving all faiths and cemeteries design studio and launch inventory on site cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. At Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to be prepared for your emergency. We promise to provide world-class robotic surgical care. We promise to treat you like family. To provide accurate diagnostic care. To provide the most innovative orthopedic care at your doorsteps. We promise to treat your baby like our own. To never stop investing in the best of spinal care. To be with you every step of the way. Here at Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to take care of our community. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped into Hudson. We're going to launch right back into the conversation. We learned so much about the Girl Scouts in the first segment. We talked about the cookies. We all love Girl Scout cookies. You know, I'm the first to admit you love a frozen Thin Mint. But Amelia, your troop has, has discovered some issues with the Thin Mints and the cookies and the way they're manufactured. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Well, mostly it comes, it's palm oil. Palm oil in the box. Even though it says that uh, it's sustainable, like they do have the stamp, the label, but it's only mixed. That's the only issue because some of it is sustainable and some some of it isn't. And what does that mean that it's sustainable or not? Sustainable means that it's like in a good. It comes from a good source, meaning okay. it's like it. Everyone is paid like okay, like it's not destroying the environment or anything. But then unsustainable is like other <laughs> certain things that come out, okay. like like child labor. It's a big one, and sex trafficking. Okay. And because you need to get that labor somewhere, cheap labor. That's, and it's still destroying like a lot of like orangutans. It's mostly their environment and you just keep growing and growing, but then you chop down the trees and you're kind of destroying the habitat. And you need to make more room for crops, so you, you need more palm oil because palm oil is really cheap and easy to manufacture. And that's the problem. So Amelia, the question that comes to mind, you're talking about sex trafficking and human trafficking and destroying rainforests and orangutans and everything else. I assume this palm oil probably comes from half a world away. You could probably tell us where it comes from. I don't even know where yeah. palm oil comes from. But you live here in Jersey City. Why does it matter what's happening, you know, thousands of miles away? Well, I mean, Jersey City is a port though, so we still kind of, we experience a lot of different kind of environments anyways. But it's just, you can kind of relate to, like even though it's a different, a different world out there there's still a kid who is also like me and we just want to you know learn some stuff even though we, we like you get curious you want to know more and you have school for that and school socializing uh the socialization is very important as well sad because of the pandemic but you could still talk on the computer but you just want to learn and do other stuff instead of working because who wants to work that's normally you think your parents would do that 
But then if you, you're a kid and you don't want to, you have to work and you might get beaten or something, or you might get eaten by a snake, you're like, oh my God, I might, you know. You see these terrible things happening to the children, yeah. to young adults that are your, your age around the world and you want to do something about it. Where do you think, Amina, this spirit of activism came from? How did you, you know, what was it inside of you that said, I, I've got to make a difference here and I'm going to round up my fellow Girl Scouts and we're going to make change? Well, I don't know. I've always kind of been a bit outspoken. I mean, my mother probably helped <laughs> added to that by her, you know, speaking out about the trailers a lot. I remember that. As and, kid. And, and, and when you're with your classmates and you're with your fellow Girl Scouts and you're talking about this activism, obviously the Girl Scouts are on board with you, all the young women in Troop 12026. But what about your friends in class? Do they think you're crazy, Amelia? Do they say, <laughs> I just, you know, worry about Snapchat or TikTok or whatever else there may be? Not really. I mean, they, they understand. Because a lot of actually my age group now that I've entered McNair, I've seen a lot of activism, actually. A lot of, you know, like the, the COVID happening in India, like they're talking about that. They're talking a lot more, even though they also have like other stuff like AP studies. They also are very active and like LGBTQ and Black Lives Matter. So they're pretty outspoken themselves. So you just kind of fall into it. Like, it, like it's there and they say it around. So they don't really say, oh, it's, it's fine. You don't have to talk about it. They're just, they embrace it. And I mean, at 14 years old, do you feel like you're making a difference? Uh, well, it depends, but yeah, mostly. Okay. It takes time to make a difference, right? It takes oh, yeah. time to make lasting change, right, Gina? Oh, yeah. And, 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 and what is it, you know, you, you help the girls get involved in this campaign, of right. course, and, and obviously there's a real issue that's got to be dealt with a real global issue. But what do you think the girls are learning on the local level about activism and, and making a difference? Um, well, I mean, again, we're, we're bringing them into a, a territory that they've never been into, right? You know, so everything was so clean cut where every year we did the same things, you know, and this year was different because once you know about it, you can't go back. It's very difficult to say, you know, I'm going to sell cookies after seeing a video of a girl um, collecting palm oil fruits, you know, girls that are like their age, you know, and saying, you know, I don't feel right eating this cookie. It, does, right. it won't taste the same. Do you yep. know what I mean? Yep. Um, like before. And I think this is a great way for them to learn more about activism uh, and advocating and, and activism and just getting their voice heard, you know, and it's, and they've been doing that. They've been doing a lot of that. We did, pro you know, we did protests. They spoke at City Hall. We're going to be speaking um, at the county on Thursday. So it's just more about creating awareness at this point. And, and I told them that from the beginning. I said, once we go down this road, we have to stay with it all the way to the end. And if you're willing to do that, then I'm willing to do that too. <laughs> Emil, you're willing to stick with us to the end? Yeah, I and have what, to. <laughs> what does the end look like? Well, the end looks like uh, it at least gets changed or they use, well, they don't, they use palm oil, but it's really sustainable, like right. better, but like, yeah. Okay. Gina, when you got involved in the Girl Scouts, you never could have imagined you'd be <laughs> fighting on what's a global fight. No, but I'm used to fighting, so, right. Right. <laughs> you know, this is, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's a new, it, again, it's also a new territory for me in, in, in the realm of palm oil. I knew nothing about it. Mm. And I'm glad that, you know, we're learning as we, as we go and we're doing the best that we can. And, and like, we're just rolling with, you know, going with the flow at this point. Perfect. Gina and Amelia, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. We're going to talk a little bit more and we come back from this break. Thank you for being with us today. Edge. Surgical care is right here in Secaucus. 
robotic surgery is safer. Shorter hospital stays. Smaller abdominal incisions. The size of an M&M. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. Hi, and welcome back to Tap into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tap into Hoboken, mm -hmm. Tap into Bayonne, and Tap into Jersey City. Before we get back into the conversation with Gina and Amelia, I do want to take a second to acknowledge all of the police officers across New Jersey that are doing everything they can to protect our communities. This week is, of course, Police Week. Uh, a bunch of police officers just left Jersey City earlier today on the Unity Tour, a little bit smaller than it used to be or that it, that it would be if it wasn't in COVID-19. But these officers, of course, are, are riding for those who've, who we've lost in the past. We remember especially Detective Joseph Seals, who Jersey City lost in 2019 in a tragic, tragic attack against him where he saved others but lost his own life. And just earlier this week, we were with Hudson County Prosecutor Esther Suarez where they named the media room in his honor. So with that, we continue to pray and send positive thoughts to all these police officers that are doing so much to keep us all safe. It's difficult times for police. It's difficult times for the community. You know, we talk about activism, right? And we're seeing activism all over the country when it comes to police brutality, right? Uh, yes. And, and, and you know, Amelia, this just sort of came to my head and I never thought I'd talk to you about this, but do you guys <laughs> think about police activity all at, at 14 years old? Well, kind of, yeah. kind of. I mean, but what happened in Times Square recently? It was just kind of, it kind of just showed like mm, you kind of do need the police here. Of course, of course. Uh, I mean, yeah, we everyone. I mean, it's around. We don't really. It does. It's not really talked about. Right. It's just. It's you. Po you post it. You you post it and you show. You just want to share it around so then people become aware right. of what's really going on. Like recently. And of course, it's important to know when you look at the three of us and, and you look at our skin color, and I'm not going to guess anybody's ethnicities or anything, but you know, of course, we're not the communities that are affected by um, you know, this police activism as much, so we all have to speak up and speak out at times. But you know, I think most of us agree, like you said, when we see what the police did in Times Square and you see the picture of the NYPD officer carrying this little child who'd just been shot, you're right, there is a very important place for, for police, especially here in Jersey City where we have some gun violence still, mm -hmm. working so hard to eradicate it. But I do want to get away from that discussion. Mm -hmm. Gina, I want to talk to you about the school board. Sure. Last night you guys mm -hmm. passed the budget, $735 million budget to get us through the next school year. How do you arrive at a number like that? And I mean, this is a lot of work that goes into a budget that big, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a very it's always been a very big budget, but it's also a lot of students and a lot of uh, different needs too, you know. Um, and we have a lot of schools. We have over forty three, I think, schools, whether they're high schools or elementary, and they require a lot of attention as well. And there's always a roof that's leaking or something. It's like you know, having 43 homes, you know, right. and taking care of all of them. Well, they're very old homes. Very, very old and, and needed that help from a while ago. Like, you know what I mean? You, you take care of your house. You don't just take care of the issues when they happen. So, you know, so that they don't happen. And I think that they were neglected for many, many years. Um, that was what she was saying earlier about the trailers that I was, a, that was a huge thing this year. Um, they got rid of a lot of the trailers in the district, which, you know, that's a, that's a big movement for us, you know, to start looking into the future of, of education and, and um, you know, good facilities for our, our students. And I just, you know, a lot of it also goes to salary. You know, a lot of it goes to, um, you know, for, I would like to see more of it go to the students themselves because that's really what this is about. And this is why I ran for the school board in the first place was to advocate for them, to make sure that they have everything that they need. And that's what I was trying to explain last night is that, you know, we shouldn't have to feel bad about, you know, asking, putting out more money for our students because they need things. They need textbooks. They need uh, laptops. We saw that this year, yeah, <laughs> you course. know. Um, and they need quality teachers as well. I mean, you talk about the cost of salary and benefits, and yeah, we know that's something that keeps going up and up and up. Right. But you guys speak a lot with the teachers' union, and right. and I think every classroom, I think Amelia would probably agree, you need a good teacher, a good qualified teacher right. in and that she's classroom. Got, she has been, you know, very, very lucky. lucky yeah. um, has like great teachers, and for the most part, all my children have had very good teachers. And I had, you know, if there was any ever any issues, I've always dealt with them and. You know, but no, you're right. I mean, there's good communication in that in that sense. Um, I mean, I'm I'm happy that you know um, 
that we did close for the year though. I think we needed to do that. I mean, we had one school that flooded. So actually two, well, her school was one, McNair was one, and PS8 was another where they can't even go back yet. <laughs> it's, right. So like I said earlier about facilities, it is very important and those things cost money and, and take time. Nothing you know happens overnight. So. And, and Jeannie, you said it before, every single year in Jersey City, the budget is going to be a challenge, of course. Right. But you came into this year's discussions with your with your colleagues and, of course, with the administration, and you're looking at COVID-19, and you didn't know how that was going to look. Right. And you didn't know what funding was going to look like from the stakes. That keeps changing right. and dropping. Right. So how are these discussions this year different than, I, you're relatively new to the school, right? you got a couple right. years under your belt now. But <laughs> right. How, I came how, in just in time just in for time, the, right? uh, the big cuts. <laughs> um, you know... I kind of I saw I saw it coming anyway because we were getting the state control back as well. We're still in transition to right. getting it back, and and with that comes responsibility, and that comes with us being to take care of our own stuff. And then um, so it, these discussions basically have stayed the same. They we're not really moving forward anywhere. I mean, people keep talking about sustainability and talking about how what are we going to do next year, and you know, at the end of the day. The city needs to take care of its children. You know, we, you know, at, that's where it's going to end up being. There's no one coming to help us. There's no one, gonna, you no know, state. What I mean? um, you know, we're not going to be getting money from Facebook or anywhere. Where, <laughs> right. so at some point, you know, where do you go? Do you cut people or do you, you know, you cut programs? And you know, I would never say to the mayor, do we need to cut police or cut firemen? You know, we. We can't do that. We can't cut children. You know, children need what they need, right. and you know, and he, you know, he's going to have to figure out a way to work with us to get that, you know, that money. And that's what that payroll tax money was for. So I'm always feeling kind of like, you know, there's money missing somewhere, mm. <laughs> like, you know, and we need to be more uh, stronger in the fact of getting that. Okay, we use the phrase a lot, you know, do more with less, which I think seems relatively trivial when we're talking about educating our children. But we're going to come back for one more segment. We're going to take a quick break now. We thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you back on the other side of the break. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Hudson TMA reminds you that a bicycle is considered a vehicle. When you ride a bike, you must obey the rules of the road. Ride single file in the same direction as traffic. Obey traffic signs and signals. Signal your turns and look behind you before you turn. And always stay alert. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped into Hudson. We're going to finish off this show with another discussion or continued discussion about schools being back open, what this school year has looked like this year. Amir, I want to ask you, how has it been for you in the past 12 months? You've been learning remotely. It's been challenging. But how have you done? Well, OK, let's start in March. OK, <laughs> okay so March. No one knew what was going to happen, sure. okay? I remember my math teacher was panicking. We just didn't know what was going to go on. We just, we got assignments, paper assignments, and then, okay, goodbye, pack up. And so they said two weeks. Everyone was happy. You, you got a break. You didn't see anyone. And then when it got bad to, like, you know, um, Easter break, we were like, uh-oh. <laughs> no, no, no. And so we didn't really, well, my math teacher did do Zoom and stuff, mm -hmm. but well, I didn't really join in because I didn't really need help in math. Like you just, you did assignments. They gave you assignments because you had Google Classroom and then that was it. By the end of the year, we, well, me, I was an eighth grader, so we graduated virtually. That was, that was, they did their best, right. I would have to say. 
And, and Gina, so you dealt with this from two sides. You dealt with it as a school board mm. member, of course, but also as a mother right. of, of three. 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 Mm -hmm. So you you had to watch your children how they transitioned to online learning. Right. I think Amelia, like most young teenagers, you felt like maybe I don't need to get onto my Google classrooms, and it didn't seem quite so serious. Right. How did the schools in Jersey City make that transition, and and how did teachers do their job to sort of let students know, hey, this is important. Like we're we're still in class. We may not be in a classroom, right? But you still got to keep learning. How did that look? Well, for I you? like that's what she was saying. Like at the beginning, it was really awkward and. <laughs> We, we, nobody really knew what was going on and like I mean they did but I mean it was a lot of paper and we did just you know it was a lot of troubleshooting I think to the point till September started when we everybody was on a zoom or a google classroom and yeah from that point like my my kids are kind of you know like 10 and up they were able to use computers you know what I mean I just think the younger kids probably had a more difficult time because a lot of it is you know they do roll writing and things right. like that so um you know we had you know, for the most part, the beginning of the year was fine. I think people had some troubleshooting as well, but then it got better. And then it got to a point where people said, enough, we don't want to do this anymore. And we're like, we're ready to go back. And, and that's, you know, what spiraled in the last couple of weeks. And of course, you talk about having the technology in your home and you were lucky that you had it for your three children. But a lot of families in Jersey City and across right. New Jersey didn't have that technology. Right. And one of your first challenges that we've talked about on previous shows with previous guests was filling the digital divide. Right. You did that in Jersey City for the most part, though, didn't you? Yes. The Chromebooks. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you got I mean, Chromebooks I think that out. also was part of with the budget is that um, Superintendent Walker um, had asked for a two to one ratio. Well, originally he had wanted a three to one ratio um, because none of the children are bringing their laptops to school. The laptops are provided in the school. Right. And then most of the time, a lot of them break. So if you know, you're know you saying two to three computers for one child, you know, and that adds up. And a lot of the money came from the CARES Act money, sure. which was great, um, but there was such a demand <laughs> that there was delays on computers yeah. and stuff. So they refurbished as many as they could. And, um, but that was, you know, that was just part of the problem. The other problem was the hotspots. So, you know, we don't, you know, at the beginning, it looked really sh shady and bad because I don't think a lot of people were logging on. You know, mm. you can tell the attendance rate was really sure. low, um, but it got better over time. I think once people got used, used to, to it, it and yeah. you know, yeah, into a pattern, into it. you know, things were really great. And I give the teachers a lot of credit for doing what they did, you know, um, and what they're doing now on top of it, because it's just a whole new world for them as well. But they, they did it and they... And I, I can say truthfully that my children are learning. They're doing, oh, yeah. and that's why, you know, my husband and I decided just to keep them home from now because I would rather them just start fresh in September. And, and I want to spend time with them before they do go back. Right. You know, you don't get these opportunities. Right. So. It's been challenging times, Gina and Amelia, but I think, as you said, students, teachers, administrators have done their best to rise to the challenge. Right. We only have about a minute left, but I do want to get back to something you said in the last segment. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the payroll tax and you talked about Mayor Fulop. Uh, what I want to ask you about is, is the communication. You, you've done two meetings now, joint between the City Council and right. the Board of Education. Yeah. Where do you think these discussions are going to take Jersey City? Well, unfortunately, I, I didn't attend either one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one because I had a, a foot surgery. and uh, But I think, you know, it's, it's at least we're communicating. Right. The whole part of it was that, you know, I think a lot of parents were yelling at City Hall and then they were yelling at us, but there was never any, like, in-between and... Um, and they're, they seem to be willing to want to work with us, which is great. I just fear that, you know, you know and of course, these are all my opinions of and course. not of the boards, but my fear is that maybe the mayor does not want to do that. And I, that, that's, that's the only thing I'm worried about is that at the end of the day, you know, this is our city and we know we have to make sure that, that every kid, every student gets what, they're, what they need, you know, to get a good education. Now, you know, every kid from one side to the other, you know, the city. Gina, it's a great, great, great way to wrap it up. <laughs> Amelia, thank you so much for coming on the show today and making your TV debut with us. <laughs> Keep up the good fight with the Girl Scout cookies. We're going to forego them until the Girl Scouts decide to make oh, a difference. You, you have that thank commitment you. from Tap Into. Thank you so much for joining us. As we say every week, stay safe, stay healthy, and now get vaccinated, please. Thank you.